so welcome back everybody my name is andrew and you're watching the kelly's country life if this is your first time visiting the channel thanks so much for stopping by so we are now on part six or part seven i've done lost count of our outdoor kitchen build i decided to uh, film this i'm trying to build a kitchen within a reasonable budget we'll discuss all that at the end of this video i'll do a full cost breakdown but today's episode is kind of wrapping up everything so i'm going to work over the next couple of days putting some finishing touches on this and some fun stuff in so as you can see i got little bags of stuff that's constantly showing up via ups so let's go ahead and start installing some of this stuff and i'll explain what we've got going on then at the end of this video we'll show everything actually functioning working and like i said explain how much we have in our outdoor kitchen build all right so for starters i got an eight foot long rubber mat in right here that's going to be critical for this area right here as you can see it's already getting heavily stained from bugs and all the work that went on in here so what i'm going to do is trim that rubber mat down since this is kind of an odd size in here and cut it to length all the way down at the end and now we have a good protective area here i also bought one with ridges that run this way that was important to me because if you don't get one with ridges, if you spill, you know, sauces or oils or things like this, it can run anywhere it wants right off of the rubber mat. Ridges kind of make it go one direction or the other and keeps it from wanting to spill, say, underneath the cabinets. Now, it's going to take this a while to want to lay out flat. I may even have to go put this in the sun after I kind of cut it to the length that I want. So something that's going to be necessary with uh, all these drawers and drawer sets out here at nighttime is lighting. So I bought some of these cheap puck lights off of Amazon. They have a motion sensor in the middle. So anytime we open up these doors at nighttime and need to pull something out of the cabinets, well, the light will kick right on illuminating it. And these were really reasonable. Something like this is necessary for sure. All right, so a step that I do not want to skip, but I'm not very happy about, to be perfectly honest with you, I have to think of a way to vent these cabinets. So you can see I've left a gap all the way around uh, this kitchen and bar area so water can flow in and out because we get heavy blowing rains here. Actually, we just had this entire bar get soaked the other night. Horrible thunderstorm come through. There was water all up on the counters everywhere, so it's already been tested. The whole porch was flooded too. So I raised it up so water can go in and out, but more importantly, so airflow can get underneath and dry it out. I can literally turn that fan on over there, and when the porch is soaking wet, the air catches on the inside where I just put that rubber mat. There's still a gap there, and you can watch it dry quickly. This area dries on the outside before any of the other side of the porch does because that airflow is coming underneath. Now we move on to the next problem. It's Florida. We get a lot of 100% humidity days just nasty hot well guess what the humidity is inside of these cabinets it's going to get moldy and dingy and stink in there we've got to get some airflow in and out of these cabinets as well so i purchased some of these cheap louvered type uh soffit vents or house vents from lowe's painted them black and i think we're going to keep them nice and low and centered so they don't catch the eye too bad and put one here, one there, two on the back side, and two on the other side. I happen to know we get a steady breeze here, and typically in the summertime it comes from the west, in the wintertime it comes from the north, so we wanna make sure we have vents to catch air on this side, but we need them on the opposite side to exit air and allow it to just flow freely through all these cabinets. This is a really important step, I believe. So while it doesn't look good, it's a necessary evil. The other thing that I really like about these vents, they have a fine mesh screen on the back side, so that'll keep all these flying insects out from climbing right in. All 
So I got to thinking one thing that I should absolutely do before putting these vents on is paint all these rough cut edges that I just exposed on this plywood. Plywood can handle some weather okay if it's sealed really well with the paint. Um, and I, I just know that we're gonna get enough blowing rain that it's gonna hit here, come down behind these vents, and plywood's weakness is the very edge, especially a rough cut edge like this. Uh, that's where it can soak up the water and potentially delaminate. So an easy way to take care of that is just put some fresh paint right on here. So I'm gonna get these edges painted up and sealed, then we'll pop these vents in. Okay, so something I want to install today, I bought some of these LED strip lights. And my plan was to install them all underneath this bar overhang and a couple of other places, but we decided to uh, stick to the outside of the bar instead of putting them underneath on the inside for fear of basically attracting bugs to our countertop surface. But we want a cool look. So these are also color changing. They have a little power supply that you have to hook them into. And I have two packs of these strip lights, but I think I'm only gonna need to run one on the outside. They're kind of flimsy and cheap looking. They have an adhesive backing. I have my doubts that these are really gonna stick up and stay. I may have to invest in what's called like a rope light. It's actually a fully encased uh, light itself in clear rubber and I can attach that up. So we're gonna play with this. We're gonna start with the little cheap light set that I bought. If it works and stays up there, great. If not, we're gonna change it out down the road. So I wanna start my lights down here and go all the way around this bar top. I've gotta to drill a hole through kind of in an exposed area to get my wire through because of the way the framing is on the inside. And I've already cut me a little piece of wood that's gonna cap over this wire and hole, paint it white. Um, it's kind of a little decorative cover piece there. The other cool thing about these lights, and I think all strip lights are the same, everywhere you see those little connections right there, which is every few inches, you're allowed to cut right through that. So you can buy a long length of this and cut it to length wherever you need. And you're supposed to be able to fold this stuff up as well and not worry about breaking the actual coated wiring on the inside. So I think the smart thing to do is start all the way down here on this end and then pull the excess into the cabinet. Then I don't have to do any cutting. Okay, so the lights are installed. You can see that underneath. We'll see how bright they are whenever night comes. Here they are going down that side. I had to make a little wooden cap to hide where they go in. Still got to caulk all that in. Now the cool thing about these lights is they're fully color changing. So with this remote right here, I can change all those different colors, turn the brightness up and down. There's a play button to make this go through different kind of colors. You can make them flash. You can make them jump around to where it looks like they're going with the music. Uh, and I think there's like, a thousand different colors you can go through and tone this to. So this is something I knew that I wanted to add out here to this cooking area. So whenever we bring up a big fish fryer, fish cooker, or doing low country bowls like we just did the other night, it's gonna be nice now having a hookup out here on the bar top. I've already done run a line. Y'all seen that a couple of episodes back and this will actually feed off my big tank back there. I'm setting myself up to where I no longer ever have to go back and forth to the store and fill up 20 pound propane cylinders. Now everything's run off my big tank that I get delivered uh, propane to and pay a monthly bill for. So this adapter right here is called a QCC1 connector. We're all familiar with them. This is what's on the end of a propane bottle. So you take your fish cooker, your Blackstone, anything, and you twist right onto this and hook up, ready to go. And I made sure I got a QCC1 connector that had a quarter inch pipe threads on the other end 
Found these very easy on Amazon. Went to the hardware store, got me a quarter inch uh, connector right here. Then I've got me a 3 8 flare. That's what all my hoses are, my gas hoses that I've run. It's probably the most common size connector you're gonna see. And I got quarter inch pipe threads on the other end. Picked that up off Amazon as well. Screwed those two together. So now my hose that's in the uh, cabinet can connect right to this. And I'm gonna mount this out the other end of the cabinet so I can always bring fish cooker or whatever up here, connect right to this, good to go. So because I'm gonna be connecting to this on the outside, this is gonna to wanna to twist and go crazy. I don't want the hose in there to come unscrewed on me. So I got one of those conduit clamps, a half inch conduit clamp fits perfectly over this and will cinch this tight. And it just so happens there's a piece stabbing out on this right here, piece of metal that I'll actually stab into the wood. But I'm gonna cinch this down really tight with some good screws to pull this tight against the four by four post that's on the wall. Uh, and that should keep this from spinning. If it spins any further, I've got other little conduit straps that I can put even further on here. I mean, I can, I can tighten this down as much as I want to. So a good spot to install this since I already have a vent right here in access. I'm thinking I want this right in this area that shouldn't snag uh, nobody's feet. There's a four by four post right here in the wall where we framed up everything that I can screw and attach this to to keep it from spinning on me. And I want to keep it low because whenever I bring like a fish cooker right here, um, it's going to have a hose that's not very long in design to go down low anyways, like it typically would to a 20 pound bottle. Okay, so that worked out really well. Now I can hook right up there. You can see this has a little bit of a flame going, but I wanna remind you all of something. That's wide open. And while it's got a decent flame, that's nowhere near as powerful as this should be. So I mentioned this in one of the earlier episodes when we were on the gas lines. Because I am running propane off of my tank, I had the gas company run me a big line through the uh, house and plummet out here because I knew what I was eventually gonna do, an outdoor kitchen. When it comes out of the tank and into the house, there is a regulator, so it's already regulated and the pressure's already very low, which is what is required for all these appliances we've hooked up. They're, you know, they're required to work at a certain PSI range or you'll hear it called inches of water column, which is basically just a kind of head pressure measurement. So because this is set up to run off of a 20 pound bottle. This right here is a regulator. That's why my flame is so low. So now all the appliances that I think I'm gonna hook up and run right here, I have to get new hoses that does not have this regulator in line. All right, so you can see I just disconnected right there. I'll pick those hoses up off of Amazon. Actually, Tractor Supply and a bunch of local stores sells regular hoses that do not have regulators. But there is the hookup, nice out of the way. I don't like the color of it, but if I paint it, it's just gonna scrape off every time I thread something on. That right there is not gonna catch nobody's pants, no issue. And uh, thanks to a viewer, we have a nice big mat that we can put right here. So anytime we wanna fry or do a low country bowl, got a big old black mat out here that'll keep from staining that concrete too. But that is a must have addition. If any of y'all are planning an outdoor kitchen with propane and gonna run off a big household tank, make sure you put one of those in for no more than it costs to do this setup. Now you no longer have to fight with 20 pound tanks. But we cannot have an outdoor kitchen and bar area, whatever you wanna call it, without a TV. So we picked one up last year on a Black Friday sale, a smart TV, just four out here. Got a really, really good deal on that. I also picked up a very heavy duty TV mount for out here. I mean, this thing is extremely well built. I wanted to get one that would articulate and go back and forth. It is rated for that size TV. Has a ton of adjustments for different angles. Not only this direction, you know, left, right, up, down. There's even adjustments back here to tilt this. So uh, really well thought out, well made. Now I know a lot of y'all are new to the channel and didn't watch me actually build the house, but I set this area up knowing that I was gonna potentially do a TV out here. Actually in this section of wall over there behind you, I've got that side set up to where we can do two TVs. 
Now in this box right here, this is a separated box that has a low voltage side. I've already got Cat6 wire in out here. I've also got an HDMI wire in out here that goes over behind the TV. So if we had a DVD player or something inside, as well as a dedicated outlet. This is all set up just for this TV. The other thing that I went ahead and did ahead of time, I've got two by 10 uh, wood material in the wall up here blocking that goes all over here. So I went ahead and blocked the entire wall out to handle lag bolts and set this mount up right there. The last thing I wanna do is be out here trying to figure out where our studs are, praying that I hit them. Uh, so I went ahead and blocked out this entire house for curtain rods, everything I could potentially think of because I had plenty of scrap wood to do it. And while I was framing the house, that was the time to knock that out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is set this up to where I can still get this box open. That's plenty good there out there. Get everything nice and level. And I know where my blocking is in the wall. One beautiful thing about me doing YouTube and social media for a living is I recorded me building this entire house. So all I have to do is go back quickly, watch a video, and I can see right where everything is in the wall. So I'm gonna be honest with you, Tiffany and I, we could about care less about TV. We're not super interested in watching TV out here, but two things we are interested in. If we're gonna have family and friends over in the fall during football season, you better have a way to play the game or you're just not gonna get people over. Boy, we have noticed that over the years. And number two, Tiffany and I love, absolutely love music. That's why you always see me having earbuds in. I'm listening to music. We come out here in the afternoons every day. Uh, set up a big Bluetooth speaker and play music, and we love music videos. So that's what this TV is going to get used for for us all the time. While we're out here cooking, entertaining, eventually get our pool in. We're going to have music videos up here playing and broadcasting that music out. So I'm more excited for it for the music video side of things than anything else. So I've got my marks made. Again, I know my blocking starts here and goes all the way over just because, well, I framed the house itself out. This is cement side and board, so I'm going to use this drill on hammer drill function with a masonry bit, bust through this, fill the holes with caulk before I actually stick lag bolts in. You do not want to screw a TV up and use weak little screws. You would actually use some sort of a long reaching lag bolt that'll go through the cement board, through the OSB side that's on the house, and then ultimately into that two by 10 blocking that I have back there. <laughs> I've already mounted the two included brackets to the back side of the TV, just four bolts, ready to go. Now I can come hang this TV up here and then we'll get it plugged in and we'll, we can go ahead and start uh, using it with Wi-Fi. A little bit later on in the house, I'm gonna do an internet episode and an ethernet episode where I'm gonna put in switch gear and actually run uh, hardwire to everything for a good reliable connection. Wow, that's a big range of motion, isn't it? I doubt we ever need it this far over, but once we build our outdoor furniture and seating area over there, we can actually use the TV to look over that far. That's pretty awesome. So let me tighten up all the bolts behind it, get everything locked in for all the movement and uh, get it plugged up. We'll fire this thing up. So check this out. We now have us a TV on the wall. So as you can see, what I did is I bought an exterior weatherproof cover for the TV. I looked at the big external uh, outdoor TV boxes. Well, heck, they cost more than the TV itself. They have big plastic covers on the front, stick way off the wall, and looks like they would really mess with your image quality as well. Um, I just decided that wasn't a good option. We're so protected right here. The occasional mist and rain and fog that could blow up here, I think this cover is gonna be awesome for it. Now, I am, I am highly impressed with how well this cover fits. I bought the 52 to 55 inch cover, but look at this. You can close up every corner. Look how protected the back is. That's awesome. I mean, the TV's completely closed. It's got flaps and stuff everywhere to go around all different kinds of mounts. 
there's not an opening anywhere on this TV, especially once you really go around and cinch everything up um, with all the different closures and Velcro. I'll make sure I put that mount, which feels really heavy duty, and this uh, TV cover down in the description in case you're curious about it because I, I really enjoy it. So as far as getting your TV out, it's gonna be up against the wall like that. I will go ahead and let you know I have drilled two holes in my TV bracket. I need to show you all that because my plans are to have a strap that goes around the backside and hooks into the top of the bracket, comes underneath and hooks into the bottom. It's one of them cinch uh, tight straps that you can thumb release real quick because I do not trust this TV being out here on very windy days or you know, a thunderstorm comes along and gets behind this. Next thing you know, it can slam this TV around. I can really foresee that happening. But one cent strap in the middle to that heavy duty bracket that's lag bolted to the wall, this TV's not going anywhere. And should we get a hurricane or a tropical storm that's coming, we get plenty of notice for that. I literally loosened two lock screws on the backside, unhook this TV, take it off, just take it inside, ride the storm out. Um, it's so quick to do. I mean, how easy is that? You can fold this right up, put it down in the cabinets, and I'm good to go. Look at the range on this TV too. I've got everything nice and tightened up. That's awesome. We can view it everywhere. Now with it over this far, yes, it does block the fan some. The majority of the time, So the majority of the time, TV's just gonna stay against the wall like this, maybe angled down. Uh, does not affect the fan at all. Actually, I can kind of kick it on over out to here, get a good view on the porch, still not in the way of the fan. It may look like it on camera, but as far as cooking and all goes, the fan still got a full clear shot. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, hey, why did you not mount the TV up even higher? Because when people are sitting at the bar, your head's kind of gonna be in the way when you're cooking. And to be honest with you, Hindsight's 2020. I probably should have mounted a little higher, but I already had my blocking in the wall right there. That's kind of where I want it. Plus, I don't want to have to get any more than a step stool out here to get covers off, to get the strap over. And if I go any higher, I'd have to start bringing a ladder out here. And a little step stool like this I can actually fold up and put into the cabinets. Okay, so we have the kitchen ready to go. We're still gonna add some stuff in the future, but I think one of the last things we need to do is try to take care of bugs, especially at nighttime. Now that we're gonna have the TV going, all this light out here, it's gonna attract bugs. So one thing that we're gonna put up in both corners of the porch is some of these bug zappers because I do have one out at my shop. They definitely work, especially for mosquitoes, and we have plenty of those. So I'm kind of testing this out Bug zappers, man, they're catch-22. They're good and they're bad. They attract bugs so they can kill them, but they also attract bugs. So you need to be careful how close you get them to where you're gonna be outdoors because, well, you're essentially waving all across the yard, hey, bugs, come over here. So what most manuals say and what this one did was try to keep it at least 20 feet away from the area that you're trying to protect. Well we're at least that far away, putting them up here in the corner. And it just so happens I put in switched outlets over in the corner all the way around the house too for Christmas lights and things just like this. So if we wind up installing these and I feel like they are attracting more bugs than they're killing, well, we'll just have to move them further down the side porch. All right, we'll get these hung. I don't think they can blow off as is, but just to be safe, I am worried about all these afternoon thunderstorms. We will go ahead and zip tie these on the hook. Make sure they can't blow off. Okay, so run this over to my outlets that I have up here, plug it in. We'll go pop one in another corner and then I have something very special to control these. All right, so the last thing I think I'm gonna install to wrap this up is one of these timed switches right here. So according to this switch, you can turn your outside lights off and on, or I can program them. It's just got a seven day timer built right into it to turn off and on at certain times of the day. So now that I'm gonna have those bug lights out there, I actually want them to run all night long to try to put a dent in this mosquito population. And because that's on the same switch outlet that controls our outdoor floodlights, 
every afternoon around dark and I want these to cut on and every morning I want them to cut off um, and that should be perfectly fine. Later on, I'll put some additional switches out there. But this right here keeps me from having to remember to come over here and turn them off in the morning, not let them run all day, turn them back on at night and miss not having my motion lights on. So I definitely want to do this programmable one here. So this is relatively straightforward to install. Uh, I'm not really going to show much in there. You got your ground, you got your blue if you're running a three-way switch, which I am not. So we're not even going to use that one. We're going to cut it off. Neutral is your white, black is your hot, and then your red is your load line out. So the wire that I'm powering the lights up out there with currently, and now the bug zappers, this is the load that goes right out. This already running off the load side of my switch as it is. So let me pop this in real quick, get it programmed, and we're gonna wrap this thing up. So here we are at nighttime for the big reveal. Got the TV going, the fan on the wall. Check out the under counter lights. And I don't know if y'all can hear, but oh my goodness. I have literally already heard a thousand bugs get fried over the last few minutes. And those two right there. So obviously that's a ton of mosquitoes and everything else that's getting burned up up there. So as you can see, we have a TV, we can play music videos. We have lights that will also color change. They can do tons of different colors. We have a refrigerator. I know the GoPro light is not good. I'm about to kick on the main lights, but I wanted y'all see this in the dark. I can see excellent with my own eyes right here. So here is a much better look at nighttime now with everything almost complete. Don't get me wrong, although the build is done, we still have a lot more content coming. So if you take a look at our trash pullout, now fully functional, ready to go. Any of our cabinets that we open up, check this out. Under cabinet lighting. Our full three door pullout, we started staging stuff. Now we have containers with silverware, we decided the containers are the way to go because it seals all the bugs out. So we got our big Bluetooth speaker underneath here. Still tons of storage. These little lights work awesome. So lots of storage underneath here as well. And we'll show this off in some future episodes. We have cast iron and other stuff ready to go. Top drawers already getting staged with, you know, everything you need for an outdoor kitchen. And of course, as everybody says, no drawers complete in a kitchen without having a junk drawer. So dusters and cell phone chargers, fan remote controls, everything. There's our junk drawer. And by the way, these lights, although very cheap, come with a nice remote control where we can change all the colors that you could possibly want. I mean, literally you can change like a thousand colors. I forgot the eyes over there. So let me go change this real quick. So I'll just put it on a fade right now. You can see it goes through lots of different colors. There's literally hundreds, if not a thousand colors. You can custom make your own colors with these buttons. Go to some preset ones. You can do flash. You can do a nice fade in and out like that right there, which looks so good. So let's not forget the TV that can swing out and take care of guests anywhere on the porch. I love having this feature. We were actually just playing some music videos out here, which I can't play due to copyright reasons on this video, but we're enjoying the heck out of ourselves. Obviously sinks ready to go. Y'all have already seen me fire up the Blackstone, the five burner cooktop over here. So we can do a ton of stuff in this outdoor kitchen right now. And we actually just cooked our first meal last weekend on our live streams, which we do every single Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're interested in watching those, Tiffany did some Berea pizzas, some crazy concoction. She always comes up with wild stuff on this Blackstone. So as you can see, we're gonna get a ton of use out here. By the way, I had to cut the uh, bug zappers off because they were making so much noise, I didn't think you could hear me. But it's music to my ears, all the bugs that'll burn up for us. So everybody, let's go ahead and give a big shout out to Vivor, the company that 
I reached out to at the beginning of this and really helped sponsor us. Like I said, we just showed a lot of this stuff off right here. Um, I've had really, really good success working with this company right here. I reached out to them and they sponsored all the stainless doors and drawer sets that you're seeing right here. So taking a peek at everything, it's all 304 stainless steel as we've shown off in several episodes right here. And the price, y'all, is amazing. If you go compare all of these door and drawer sets right here to some big name brands, you're literally gonna pay twice what you'll buy these for right here. But this wouldn't be a fair review if I didn't tell you there were a couple little minor issues that I had. So like I said, to keep this nice and fair, you can see I have one door that slightly sticks out right here and one that does that over here. That is all I can find with these sets. And that is because these come with welded in hinges. And if you look right here, you'll see that the top hinge is slightly sticking out more than the bottom. And that's what's kicking this door out right here. Same exact thing happened over here. Now, to be perfectly honest with y'all, can you really complain with the prices that you're paying? I'm talking a lot of these door sets are under $100. Some are a little over. For stainless steel, you can't hardly beat it. The nice, really nice drawer sets, 200 and something dollars. Again, go price around and shop that somewhere else and see if you can get anywhere near that price with the big name brands. You just absolutely can't. So without a doubt, adding all the stainless stuff and the way that we laid this out took it to another level without adding a ton of expense. By the way, we're about to go over the full cost uh, for this kitchen build right here. So I want y'all to do me a favor, pause this video right here, be honest, go down and leave a comment for the entire kitchen. I'm gonna give you breakdowns right here. I've got it all wrote down. I spent some time going through all the receipts. What do you think it would cost for you to build a kitchen just like this with every single thing that you see? All right, so hopefully y'all went down there and, uh, and left your comment. I don't care if you said $1,000 or $25,000. I'm genuinely curious to see what people think it would cost to add all this kind of stuff and get an outdoor kitchen just like this. All right, so when this build originally started, I told y'all that I went out and priced man-made, which is like your Corian countertops. A lot of people said that's what you should do this build with right there. Other people said granite, stainless steel, everything else. But I knew I needed to keep this within a specific budget, but I started out immediately pricing out the square footage, cost per square footage for man-made Corian countertops. So the countertops themselves, believe it or not, every company I checked, which was a pile of them, they want to come out and measure uh, they want to go back and cut and they want to install. That's the way everybody offered a price unless you wanted a small little scrap piece that they had outside that would not work for this amount of countertops. <clears throat> so the price going for kind of the entry level, the price would just went up from here. Corian countertops was, believe it or not, $3,600 to do. The bar tops, all of this area right here, all the way back around. By the way, that did not include backsplash or some of the side pieces. That would have been additional. But that did include cutouts, which you pay for for sinks, cutouts that you pay for for a blackstone area, things such as that. So I told y'all at the beginning of the build, I was gonna try to build this material-wise, not appliance-wise, but material-wise, for what just that set of countertops would cost. So by a stroke of luck, I swear I did not plan this. I rounded everything to the near cent. Believe it or not, materials now, this is wood, this is tile, this is your trim edge, your plumbing, my gas lines, all the materials for this build came out to $3,549. Now, if you add in all the stuff that Vivor donated, all the stainless steel equipment that you're seeing here, which I told you I'd include the price of, that comes out to about $1,120. That's not including the coupon discounts that they're currently giving, but that did include some discounts that they've been offering throughout this entire build. So that's again what blows my mind, trash pullouts such as this, multiple drawer pullouts everywhere, double doors, all this stuff that you see for a little over $1,000. It, in, it increases the quality, the feel of the look so much for such little money, in my opinion. There was no way I was gonna spend the time building wooden doors and things that just did not look right for that kind of money. That, that was just a, a no-brainer. You've got to do the upgrade to really make things look good for a little over a thousand bucks for all this stainless stuff. 
Now, a lot of you are gonna be curious about what about appliances? I broke that down into a separate category because I have no idea what you're gonna to wanna to put in your outdoor kitchen. But again, okay, so we're talking, what is that? 46 to $4,700 for all your stainless stuff, all the materials, that's the tile. I splurged on the trim edge. Don't forget, I also waterproofed everything, fire retardant. I went well above and beyond what most people do. Three quarter inch plywood everywhere, really overbuilt this wiring, plumbing, additional plumbing, things that other people wouldn't do. So you have a lot of opportunity to save money there. So what about appliances? Well, the, from the fan itself, which was $125, the five burner cooktop, you may or may not want that in yours. That was $270 on Amazon. So you have refrigerator here, a nice glass front stainless refrigerator, which matches everything else. This is by RW Flame. That was $375. This is a wine and beer fridge refrigerator. It's kind of set up just for that. I didn't want your standard kind of uh, black or white refrigerator right here. While you could have saved some money with that, it wouldn't look appropriate for everything else that we have going on in here. Blackstones are currently back on sale right now. A lot of viewers told us on our live stream the other night, they're finding them for $300 on Walmart. I've seen them at my local tractor supply for $350, but sounds like Walmart, you can go pick these back up 300 bucks. That's awesome because they were just $450, which was overpriced in my opinion. And if you want to add a TV, a lot of y'all are not going to do that in your build. We paid $350 for that TV on a Black Friday special. Then you had a bracket back there and a couple other connections. So I rounded it up to $400. So total for everything, exactly what you're seeing that I have built right here. I'm curious to see how this matches up to all your numbers from the lighting to the gas, to the blackstone, to the cooktop, the sink, the TV, if you just splurged and went all out, the rubber mat, everything that you're currently seeing here and all the stuff that you can't see uh, behind the scenes in the cabinets was just a tad over $6,000. Take the TV out because a lot of y'all may not want that. You're talking $5,700. Now, some of y'all may not think that's a budget build. I absolutely do. I guarantee if I hired somebody to build this and go buy all this stuff for me, it would probably be two and a half to three times that amount of money. And who can truly build an entire kitchen, minus an oven here, although we have something coming, for, well, $6,000 or less, dollars, including TVs and everything else. So again, just to recap, materials, $3,500. All the stainless doors, if you want to do that and not build your own, you're talking $4,600, dollars $4, to do the majority of what you're seeing, and then you add your own appliances and electronics. So I do want to say thank y'all for watching this build. It's been an awesome uh, series. I appreciate all the people that uh, enjoy watching all the tips and tricks and allowing me to talk and kind of do what I do. I love to ramble on, I love to talk, and I like to know the nuts and bolts, the hows and whys. I hate making videos that are just a few minutes long, flying through, not telling you nothing, not explaining anything, and not giving you any of the information that I feel is kind of critical when you're gonna attempt a DIY build yourself. So hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Just to let you know what's coming up, we're technically done with the build now, but we are not done. We're about to do custom bar stools. I'm about to head out and pick up that metal tomorrow. We'll have that coming in the next couple of weeks. We have a few more little touch-ups and accessory builds here. We have some cooking appliances coming, plus appliances themselves. We're actually gonna do an episode where we'll show you how we stage everything, what we've brought out here, special containers to handle rodents, humidity. We're gonna get some new countertop appliances, show that off, some stuff for winter, some stuff for summer, whenever we have a deck and a pool. So this series will continue to go on, although the major build portion is technically done. But we do have a lot more content coming. Don't forget, we have over 200 videos of me building this house right here. We have more projects going around the property, about to start our loft building, custom stairs, custom railing, again, custom bar stools. The list goes on and on and on. So if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to the channel because we do post weekly videos and we have a lot more DIY content coming. Thank y'all so much for watching. And again, thank you to Vivor for sponsoring this build and helping us out. We'll catch y'all in the next video. 